the Dorchester was docked there in New York City. The chaplains joined the throngs of men that were gathering on board the ship. There were four chaplains. One was a Roman Catholic priest named John Washington. Another was a Jewish rabbi named Alexander Good. There was two Protestants, Chaplain Poling and Chaplain Fox. They were all lieutenants. They had all gone to chaplain school. And the four of them found that they all had so much in common. They thought in terms of humanity and not just in terms of their own individual community. As I went down in the river to pray, standing in America in 1943 was deeply divided. Those who did not share the same skin color or worship God in the same way lived largely apart, separated by prejudice, suspicion, and hate. Let's go down. Let's go down. Come on. Americans often focused more on how they differed with those of other beliefs than on what they shared in common. That you had four chaplains who were of differing religious backgrounds and different faith groups were able to put aside those differences was really a testimony to their understanding that in order to be victorious, we had to work together. A lesson the chaplains would teach every day with every breath. A lesson that would prove vital when the ship and its young soldiers sailed into deadly waters and into the crosshairs of a Nazi wolf pack. The Dorchester ended up pulling in three days later to Newfoundland. The ship offloaded its precious cargo of men, not to sightsee, but rather for a 10-mile ruck march. After the Dorchester left uh, St. John's and went into the open sea, the Germans got word that the convoy was heading toward Greenland. The Dorchester was now on a collision course with the enemy. Fear would stalk the decks. Its primary antidote, faith, and the four chaplains who understood its power. On February 3rd, 1943, at one o'clock in the morning, we heard this tremendous explosion. We were hit by a torpedo. The torpedo hit into the right side of the ship. Everything went black. All lights disappeared. Because everybody running like a lunatic. It was every man for himself. People were frantic, people who didn't forgot their life preservers, people who didn't have clothes on. Some of them were crying. They were just caught completely surprised and they didn't know what to do. The chaplains made their way to the top deck, doing everything that they could to try to give soldiers some direction in order to save as many lives as they possibly could. The four chaplains took off their life preservers and gave it to men, four strange soldiers, who didn't have a life preserver on. And they gave it to them so that they could possibly survive this ordeal. These chaplains, they could have been the first one to jump overboard into the lifeboat. They could have kept their life fest, but they made decisions. They were very courageous men. The ship was about to go down, but the chaplains were about to lift their men to new heights. The four would come together to shine a beacon of hope in the ship's darkest hour. That's when I saw these four men standing arm in arm on the top of the boat. The chaplains locked arms and prayed together. They linked arms, and then they joined in singing hymns, each of them in a different language. One was Latin, one was Hebrew, another was English, 
and they were humming these songs uh, while the ship went down. To see them in that disheveled moment of um, disaster all around them, and yet this inner calm in these four men as they ministered to the people around them was, as one man said, as close to heaven as I ever hoped to be. On this 75th anniversary of the sinking of the Dorchester and the powerful legacy of the four chaplains, we remember their supreme sense of chaplain identity, excelling in both their ministerial call and their military commitment. And we remember their devoted demonstration of chaplain leadership, unmatched in their character, competence, and connection for God and country. <laughs>